Play smart. Walk smart. Winners play smart. Unlike the scrum, which can largely be controlled by the referee before the contest, this structured control cannot happen in the tackle. As a result, the main influencer of tackle-related head, neck and spine injuries on the field are the players themselves. The referee can only intervene reactively, that is, once the event has already happened. This is where coaches need to take more responsibility and coach their players to use the correct, safe and effective tackle techniques. It is also their responsibility to instill the right values in their players to compete within the laws of the game and in a legitimate, safe and sportsmanlike manner. Coach behavior, player behavior, tackling style and technique can all have an influence on the risk associated with tackling. It is here where most of our coaching emphasis needs to be applied to lower this risk. The only way we can get this to work is if you believe in the system and the approach. Did you know that the majority of the scientific papers that deal with tackling all come to the same conclusion? And it really doesn't matter which level of rugby we're talking about. Whether we look at catastrophic head, neck and spine injuries or simply the normal run-of-the-mill injuries that happen in the game of rugby, the single biggest preventative measure we can use is to coach, teach and develop proper, safe and effective tackling technique. Knowing what you know, then why are players still tackling like this? instead of like this. Safety or player welfare is an integral part of keeping rugby alive and keeping players playing rugby and is one of SA Rugby and World Rugby's most important strategic objectives. Even though you might have heard some of these points many times before, let's revisit the very basics of the tackle, that when not done properly or when they are executed incorrectly are still contributing to concussions and serious and catastrophic head, neck and spine injuries. Let's start at the beginning. Tracking your opponent is the first and probably the most critical part of controlling the tackle situation. Stay square to your opponent for as long as possible and deny them space and options by running towards the attacking players inside shoulder. Take shorter, faster steps as you approach and where required, follow the player by shuffling sideways and not planting or crossing your feet. Crossing or planting your feet can give the ball carrier an opportunity to beat the tackle by catching you off balance or on the wrong foot. Keep your elbows low and hands up in a boxer stance. Keep your face up, eyes open and sight your target. This also places your neck or cervical spine in a stronger and safer position. Tackling with the head up has also been shown to increase neck muscle activity levels and improve stability of the head and neck. If you get this wrong and you drop your head, you open yourself up for a potential concussion, head, neck or spine injury. Most catastrophic spinal injuries occur during tackling, where improper technique is used. A key example of this is when a tackle is made with the head down. Equally important, you might not complete your tackle successfully, as you cannot adjust to any last-minute change in direction from the ball carrier and could be left standing there with egg on your face, having completely missed the tackle. As you prepare for contact, dip and step into the tackle with the lead foot while presenting the same shoulder. If you do not get in close and launch from too far away, you will lose any strength and power going into the hit and will seldom have the ability to dominate the tackle. At the same time, you will mostly be going down, which also increases your risk of injury as a tackler, instead of moving forwards and upwards, which allows you to be safer, stronger and far more effective. Keep your spine in line and align your head outside of the ball carrier and not in front. Making contact with the head or neck 
either head first or from the wrong side, is a high risk for concussions and for catastrophic head, neck and spine injuries. So correct head placement is crucial. Aiming too low puts the tackler at risk, especially with the front on tackles. And aiming too high or above the chest line puts both the tackler and the ball carrier at risk of injury. So aim for that sweet spot in the middle. Leading with the arms, aim to place your shoulder onto the ball carrier around the mid torso. As you make contact, punch and wrap the arms and pull the ball carrier in tight, hit and stick. Maintain your leg drive into the tackle to secure the hit and protect yourself. Once you have brought the ball carrier to ground, regain your feet quickly and compete for the ball. The greater the difference in momentum between the tackler and the ball carrier actually increases the risk of injury. So once you decide to tackle, it is important to commit yourself fully and follow through with it properly. Do not sit and wait passively for the ball carrier to run onto you. Some of our latest scientific research has focused on these key technical points and has identified that some might have more prevention value than others. As a rule, tackling above the hips and below the sternum or breastbone will ensure a safer tackle outcome and will limit the risk to both the tackler and the ball carrier.